As you guys know, we have a slight, or uh, not a slight, but we have a presentation at the beginning of this meeting. Uh, and then after that, we will commence with the regular town hall meeting. So uh, hopefully that you, this presentation will be informative. It's something for the whole village, for all the village residents. And uh, you can ask whatever questions you need to ask pertaining to what they're going to present to you. So I'll give you three minutes. Okay, um, good afternoon, good evening, and um, thank you guys, first of all, for coming out for the town hall meeting that we have. We've been doing this for about, I think it's about two and a half years, or maybe a little bit more, but um, for the first time that came out, that's coming out for the first time, this is basically an informative um, town hall meeting. We talk about um, things that interest interest you as a citizen, um, give you information on what's the, the, basically the topics that you have, uh, what's going on in the village, uh, streets, uh, things that you didn't get a chance to ask at the board meetings, which are the second and fourth Tuesday. Really, you can ask at any meeting, but you only get a time limit. And also to network with your uh, neighbors. A lot of times you may think you're the only one that has that problem and you find out others do. And maybe sometimes you can get together and maybe solve that problem. So that's one of the reasons why uh, we started this uh, back at that time. And um, we're keeping it going because this is what the residents want. Um, from time to time, I try to have 
um, speakers, guest speakers to come out. Uh, we've also had youth from Chicago come out and do a presentation. We've had our youth and our young teenagers from um, our school district here come out and have a little talk with them. And then we had the superintendent, the uh, principal, and the vice principal from Bloomfield High School to come out and listen. Come out and listen and hear what, what the uh, students have to say. Um, we, didn't get, we didn't have it going back and forth. We just asked the administrative staff to come out and listen to what the students had to say. It was very interesting. I kind of, kind of liked it a little bit. And uh, at the very end, quite naturally, the superintendent had something he wanted to tell, but they did write down some of the things that the students did say that was some of the things they'd like to see change. So, um, as I stated from time to time, it is very informal, and it will be informal. The rules are we do not get personal. We do not insult each other. Quite naturally, there would not be any swearing. And, you know, um, back, back and forth badger. Now, if you do have a, a problem or something, I'm sure we all adults here, we can convey that in a professional manner. We don't have to point or uh, go back and forth with a different type, a different type of dialogue. So yes, uh, we will talk. We we'll try to answer your questions. If I can't answer, believe me, I will get answers back to you. Because that's why I ask who who are you and basically their phone call so I can call you back and let you know if I can't answer that question. But right now, I met these two ladies. Um, I think it's something that the village needs to at least listen to. Um, it's a, they're gonna present a financial way um, for you as residents, not for the village to do, but you as residents to try to look at, deal, um, um, ask questions, become part of it, um, maybe maybe someone will sign up, but this is something that we all may need when it comes to finances. And they have a program. Um, it's based out of Oak, Park, I mean, um, Oak Brook. And um, they're bringing it here to us, to our community, to inform us, to let us know what it is that there's out there for residents, for citizens, and um, basically to inform us what's, what we can and cannot do, because Let's face it, everybody may, may or may not have financial problems. And it's not just for someone that has that, it's also, it's a savings plan. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Aisha Scott and uh, Myrna uh, Pearson. But Aisha's gonna speak first. I thought I had a loud enough voice. Um, so thank you for having us, I really appreciate it. Um, again, my name is Aisha Scott, and I am a financial educator. And I came here because of my colleague, Myrna, who actually lives in the village, she lives in Sager. And Myrna and I met by her going through some financial workshops. So what I am is I am, like I said, I'm a financial educator and I work with a company, it's a nonprofit company called the Heartland Institute of Financial Education. Has anybody heard of it? Okay, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, I actually grew up in the Manson area and then moved out to Lone, Creek Lone area. Um, and when I learned about the program and I got heavily involved, but then I moved closer to my office out in Oprah. And I said, you know, our community needs to know this information too. I don't think it should just be geared toward one community. You know, um, I think everybody needs to know this information. So what we've done, uh, we partnered up with the Heartland Institute of Financial Education, and what we do is we go out into communities and we provide financial literacy classes. Um, we don't charge for the classes, um, but we just want to. We see that there is a huge need as far as being financial illiterate. A lot of people are financial literate when it comes to their finances. I mean, I know. I've learned a lot, and I've even taught my parents some things, but things that you just don't even know that's available. So some of the classes that we would like to bring here, because we realize everyone can't travel all the way to Oak Brook or all these 
you know, far suburbs, where there's already a lot of programs and things like that going on, I want to bring this back to the area that I grew up in. And some of the classes that we have is like how to increase your cash flow, debt management, how to build a strong financial foundation. We talk about uh, protection. Do you have the proper protection? Protection meaning disability, long-term care, life insurance, health insurance, um, asset accumulation. How do you build wealth? And then retirement planning and then wealth preservation. We're finding that a lot of people um, don't have wills. They don't have trust. And a lot of this money is, called, is getting what's called is cheated. I used to be a banker for about 15 years working in the financial industry, and I see hundreds of thousands of dollars just be sent off to the state of Illinois. Why? Money sitting in bank accounts and nobody's claim? Because, you know, our finances are private, right? So we don't talk about certain things. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't want the state of Illinois getting my money or my family's money. Can I, get, can I agree? Can anyone agree with me on that? Um, you know, so what we're doing is, our mission is to educate one million families by the year 2020. And we're providing this free education because there's a need. There's actually only four high schools in the United States that require a financial literacy class. Isn't that something? You know, and I remember when I was back in going to college, you know, they were there, the credit card companies were there, you know, waiting for you to sign up for a credit card. No job, zero income, here's a thousand dollar limit, right? So we were already starting our kids off, or, you know, starting off at 18 years old, getting in debt. You know, not knowing how to manage our funds. And so we just feel the need, you know, we have to create at least one money manager in, in everyone's household. You know, there's always that one go-to person. You know, if you're sick, you call, at least I call my grandma still. What do you do for that cold grandma? You said, you know, apple cider vinegar and what? You know, um, if there's something about finances, well, what do I do about this? What do I, how do I get out of debt? How do I save for my future? I only, I only make minimum wage. And so we show people that I don't care if you make $10 an hour, if you're on a fixed income, or you make more than that, how you can save. So, um, so that's what we're here to do, is here to educate. So we want to come back maybe in the spring, and we'll talk to you all to see what are, what are some of the questions that are out there? What are some of the needs, the information that you need? Because a lot of times, people don't know where to go. You know, if you want to talk about, well, what should I have in my will or my trust? Well, if you go talk to an attorney, what do they want, usually? Anybody know? Money. When you go talk to they want what? Money. They want money. They want a retainer fee, right? You know, now they won't even talk. They make, some of them may give you a 30-minute consultation, right? Um, if you want to talk about, you know, how to get better credit, you know, there's all these, like, credit repair and things like that are out there. We don't know which ones are legit and which ones are not. So, again, we're here to just educate everybody you know, whatever question as far as finances. And if we don't have the answers to it, what we do is we will direct you to who we know and trust that, that um, you know, who we refer you to. Uh, but that's the first step, you know. The first step is to make at least one person in your household a money manager and be able to understand what you do, how to save, how to build wealth. And then just depending on, um, you know, just what's going on, you know, in the government, in the state, and things like that, we have to understand what's going on. We have to understand our medical plans. You have to understand having Medicare, you know, to have certain supplements that, that will go with the Medicare. You know, do you understand those type of things? We have people that are certified to teach Medicare classes. Doesn't cost you anything, just show up. And I really applaud Myrna, you know, um, she's in this, living in this community, and she has been going out trying to get the word out. Um, we have been in the Richmond Park Village. We have been in Park Forest. In Park Posen. Posen. Uh, Park Ridge is coming up. And Park Ridge is coming up. And what we do, they basically tell us what classes they're interested in. So right now we're dealing with a lot of seniors, right? And they have questions about Medicare. What is this? What is Part A? What is Part B? What is Part D? Do I need it? What is F? You know, so we have those informative classes so that you can inform yourself. And if you need additional help, you know, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one and we can help you with that. Um, so we've done those, we've done long-term care classes, we've done estate planning classes. And it's literally just information. So you take the information, if you want more, we'll give it to you. So that's what we're here for. Um, I don't know, Martin, if you wanted to say anything. Uh, we were gonna have a, a presentation, actually, 
but the uh, chords didn't match up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, eventually, but eventually we do want to come back if you will, will have us. And whatever subjects that you all are interested in, let us know. And either I can teach the class, and if I'm not certified, I will find somebody who is certified to keep teach the class. And um, you know, you can take the information back to your families, back to your children, back to your parents, whomever. <laughs> so any have any questions so far about what we do? And I'll just let Marta introduce herself and she can just say why she got involved with our organization. Um, and but I like I said, I really admire this woman. You know, she has really hit the pavement going out and and wanting to educate this area. So um, thank you for letting me, uh, give me the opportunity to speak to you and I'll pass it over to Marta and then we'll wrap everything up. Thank you, Aisha. Um, some of you people don't know me, but I'm a longtime resident of Sauk Village. Um, I was born and raised out here almost 50 years. And I grew up in a small town, a lot of changes out here, but it's my passion for what happened to my parents and all the issues that I've gone through that I need to educate everybody, anywhere and, everybody, anywhere and everybody about the things that we need to know on our own and not have to pay for those. It's free education. It's my passion to go out to communities and educate them where it's needed. So we kind of just wanted to bring it to you and let you decide if this is something that you need because I know it's helped me out a lot as far as debt management, um, you know, protection on my children and everything else that our program offers. But. Um, it is my passion, and like I said, I'm going to continue to do what I need to do to keep educating every town, city, state, whatever it's possible. That's my mission, is to educate a million families by 2020. And thank you all for, uh, very much for coming out. Yes, I'd like to, um, I do have a question for you guys, two questions. One. Do we have any literature that we can pass out tonight? Um, the only thing we have right with us today um, is like a checklist that they can fill out if there's anything that they're really interested in. Um, okay, if anyone would like to have one, raise your hand and they can pass them out to you. And the second thing, I'm about to go into Medicare. Matter of fact, it'll be two weeks from now. What is Medicare? What is Part F? Well, Part, so let me just put a disclaimer. So I'm not certified. Okay, because okay. I didn't know F. But, yes, there's different. You can get F, you can get G. There's like different inclusive plans. So it really comes down to how often do you go to the doctor? So if you have somebody that, and don't mind, it says membership checklist. Um, we're not asking you to be a member. Uh, that's just a checklist that will allow us to see what type of services you would like from us. But, so, oh, record, I'm not certified, but in, in general, like if my dad was asking me, you know, what is the difference? Well, basically the difference is, is it depends on if you're an individual that goes to the doctor a lot. So if you already have a lot of medical conditions, you know, you're on treatment plans, you're on a lot of medication, you see the doctor more than your once or twice a year, then you may not want to get on one plan than the other. Because what, basically what it is is a deduct, deductible issue. So either your payment, your monthly payment, will be higher, right, and is more inclusive, or your monthly play payment will be lower, but you have a higher deductible. So, for instance, I told my mom, who recently turned 65, that she didn't need the all-inclusive one. Why? Because she never goes to the doctor. Like, I mean, you know, once a year. So why are you paying a higher monthly fee just so you can avoid a $139, $140 deductible, right? I wanted to lower her monthly cost because she doesn't go to the doctor a lot. Now, of course, you never know, you know, if something happens or things like that, but going off of past results in the past two to five years, she hasn't been. 
So I wanted to her to lower her monthly payment because she's on a fixed income now. You know, we need our money now. Some people need their, you know, depending on what you have coming in. And so, but there is a difference. Um, and we can definitely come out and do a class. We have someone that we work with who is a guru with all the plans and, and everything. And we can have them come out. Need some up front here. Marna, we have a couple other people that need some. Up here. Um, like for instance, you know. Well, she what, needs a car. She needs a car. <laughs> Some people know that if you're currently on medication, so like for instance, my dad is a diabetic and he takes two different types of insulin and he takes uh, high blood pressure. He doesn't need to be on the lower monthly plan. He needs to be on the higher monthly plan because he's going to be going what? To the doctor regularly, he has an insulin shot and a medicine and he takes high blood pressure pills. So, you know, it just depends on each individual person. Don't let somebody sell you like a blanket plan because the blanket plan doesn't work for everybody. Okay? Hopefully that answered. <laughs> yeah, it does. Because I was just wondering, um, that is basically is needed, period. Medicare questions, um, because you go to the Social Security office over there, you're going to be sitting there for what? At least 45 minutes and you get two questions and then they'll move on. So, you know, then a lot of times they say, well, you could have did this online or made a phone call. You make a phone call, you're going to sell that phone for an hour. But something like this, yes. But if we can do something like this and get questions answered and they come out on a regular basis to come out, I think the village needs something like that. And that's something because we all, if we live long enough, are going to have to go that way. So, are there any, yes, you have a question? Just a uh, remark to you. I didn't that does that. Is the is about to go on
something on here that you really want to know, you can always shut it down on the back of it so we kind of know what you're actually looking for, what kind of information, you know. It's basically to, you know, get every community out here because a lot of people don't know this information. You know, if you want to know a little bit more about long-term care or Medicare or anything like that, please try to down on the back of it so that we can try to work on making workshops and educating the community. Thank you so very much, Myrna. And uh, Aisha, you guys, I mean, this, this is information that I didn't know it was like that. I mean, I knew there were information, like she said, with Bloom, but to actually come out and personally answer some of the questions, or have someone there to personally answer some of the questions, it's not just Medicare, it's also financial. How to set up, and we don't have a lot of young people, but we do have some young people, how to set up annuities, how to set up um, ways to um, save, save money and invest. Investment is a powerful tool that we need to look at because um, when it gets to that point, that's what you may have. I mean, your, your pension only goes so far. You know, you so everyone, just like you have Medicare. Medicare, you have Medicare supplements, so you're going to have to have pension supplements. Yeah, Social Security is going to be, it's, 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 there's really nothing now, um, and then they're trying to find ways to take it from you because I didn't even know that they took a uh, deductible for your Social Security for Medicare. I always thought Medicare was free. I did. I thought it was just part of that you pay into and, you know, you get the service free. So now they charge you every month after you turn 65, even if you have insurance, you have to take theirs first, and then the supplement is what you have. Or you have penalized. Yes. Or you, or you make, well, you have to take it there. Right, same thing with them. So they found a way to get that back from you. Unless you're working full-time. Full-time, right? Oh, okay. But now, if... I'm 11, right? I'm still working full-time. Yeah. But if you're working full-time, will you still get... Social Security? Yeah. Okay, so you can still draw Social Security, but they won't take out because, I guess, because the insurance. Because I have insurance at work. At work, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But if you retire with your insurance that you have at work, you're still going to be penalized because you still got to pay Social Security. Well, but what if you have insurance that will pay you for the rest of your life? In other words, you got, you got um, No, what I'm saying is if you have the job where, say for instance, you have a job that when you retire, they pay your insurance. What do you do when you, what do you, do when you lose your job and you have no insurance? Yeah, that's true too. But I mean, there's some jobs in the state that will pay your insurance. But when you get 65, they tell you to let them know. They become your, I guess, Medicare Part B or D or whatever. And then Medicare takes over. Okay, questions over here. Yes. No, I just have something I want to let everybody know. When you're on Medicare, you know, you still pay your insurance through Medicare. I have straight Medicare. I won't go the other way with the advantage. I hear more stories about that. Um, my husband has a secondary, which pays his deductible, pays his he has had it since 2012. He's not paid one single penny for any medical. We have, I don't know how to say that, the love of the people we have, which is Mutual of Omaha. And we have the Plan F. Pays everything, deductible for Medicare as well as the co pays. Right. He pays not a dime. And he's in the hospital all the time. Right. And he's right. sick all the time. Yes. Uh, yeah, Medicare is filed first when you like go into the hospital right. or somewhere. You tell them you have Medicare and a supplemental insurance. Yeah. 
Yeah. They bill Medicare. Medicare pays very little. Yeah. And and your. Uh, I thought they paid eighty yeah. percent. Yeah. Well, that's not little. <laughs> okay, and then you have to pay twenty. Yeah. And then your supplemental, which I advise if you can afford it, do it. Uh, they pick up the rest. Right. Our stuff. Right. That's why I was saying that. So you, so you know, they they are experiencing. Experience it. If you have someone that goes to the hospital all the time, or you know, regularly, you definitely want to get F because F is gonna it's gonna be a higher deductible payment, but it's gonna cover more things. Wow. But, if you, but if you don't have, if you don't go to the hospital a lot, then you can do two things. Say those little but things. Anyway. <laughs> but I mean, but now back to you though, Ms. Harris. Either one. Do they still take out that whatever it is, 130 or 135 or something like that each month? Is that still taken out of your Social Security, even though you don't have to pay whatever? No, that's taken out of Yeah. It's taken out of Social Security, right? right? Automatic. Automatic. Right. If you, whatever it may be, that's, what I, that's the part I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, you got to pay this 135 when you get 65, irregardless to whatever insurance you have. One thirty five. It went up on your social security, but everything keeps going up. So in order for you to get it, yeah, you gotta pay for it. And there's no way is there, and that's one of the questions I wanted to find out, is there a way around that? I mean, you can have insurance that says your job says we're going to pay for your insurance because you qualified, you've been next to somebody else for the rest of your life. Okay, thank you. But when you get 65, we're going to, not we, the government is going to take out of your, out of your Social Security 135, even though you have insurance. Yes. And then you still may, you still may have to pay a deductible. After, after Medicare and your secondary, because they may not cover it all, so the hospital's gonna come after you for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Before they, <laughs> and they said, <laughs> That's why I said about investing. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm saying you guys have a, a plan because you can't be, you see what the government is doing. So you can't rely on them to, for, you know, at, at, at the beginning when they started Social Security, you could just about live on it. Now you can't pay a car loan on it. I mean, and then they're finding ways to take that away. And then the, the drugs are going up. So therefore the copay is going to go. So now you got to get another insurance to pay for the copay. So, you know, and you're paying for that. It's, it's rough getting older. Yes, yes, very much. And before these ladies leave, there's any more questions? I, I can't answer them. I'm just not getting it. Oh, they want you to get the cards. And then we want to finish with their card. They are going to raise their hand. They can collect the cards. Again, I'd like to thank you young ladies for coming out and being this very, that was very informative. And um, we will look forward to having you out again. And um, if we can come out and do something on a regular basis, probably every quarter, because all of us are getting older and all of us got to go this way. And, that, and like I said, it's not just Medicare. It's for the, for the youth, well, the young adults, um, getting started with the annuity plan. As, as, as early as they can, find out how easy it is to invest in an annuity plan. I just wish I had done it a long time ago, but it's very, very good, and you can save money on your taxes too. Um, so those are some of the things that we really need to be exposed to. And um, again, Aisha, I really I don't know where Myrna went, but I really appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you.
And thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing from you and learning from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, now, um, I'm going to, like I always do, I'm going to start off, first of all, um, are there any questions uh, pertaining to anything that you may feel that's going in the village, uh, projects, uh, anything that you'd like to see, any questions on some of the things that you have seen and want a clarity on, I'll take those first. So if anyone has questions on that, um, I'll take those questions first. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I haven't looked at the village calendar in over a week because last time I looked at it, it said it did not show any board meetings at all. And that was two, three weeks ago. And there was some kind of a, a email blast or whatever that says this is when it's either email blast or it's on the village site that these are the days that the committee meetings are on and these are the days that the board meetings are on. Now, there was also in the calendar, it shows different committees meet on these days each month or whatever the situation is. And I looked up what the committees there were when they met, I did not see any dates when the financial committee meets. Now, I asked um, Ed about that, and I asked him yesterday. I says, when you guys meet, because I didn't see it on the village calendar. He said, well, we, uh, we meet, um, once a month, we're required to meet once a month. And I said, then how do the bills get paid? You know, because there's, there's salaries, and I know people don't get paid once a month here. I assume we don't. So he says, well, I says, when, you know, I'd like to come to the next meeting. And you tell me, you know, what, when is it? Uh, because I imagine it would be open to the public. It's a committee. And he says, well, there's, I said, how many are on your committee? And he says, there's, there's Rosie, which is the chairperson, and himself, and the mayor, and the, and Rohan, Mo, yeah, and uh, Fairman. That's who makes up the finance committee. That's what he told me. So, um, I says, okay, then when there's something that has to get paid and it's not in, you know, the board hasn't voted on it, how do these things get paid? Well, the, uh, it's usually the chairman, Williams, and um, maybe the mayor and, and, uh, or, or two others. He was kind of vague, okay? And I'm just curious, you know, if they have a, a meeting, if they're supposed to have a meeting once a month, then I would like to attend one, and maybe others would. It should be, I believe, it should be on the calendar. All right. I said, do they take minutes? And he says, yes, yes there's minutes. I said, maybe I'll look up some of the minutes. Because to me, that would that would say it would have to be ear, earmarked when things are paid and, and who signed. That would be my, you know, assumption. So that's, that's, I'm just curious, that's all. Okay, um, first of all, the committee for all committees are made up of two trustees, chair and co-chair. They can meet, 
This is what was told to me, so I'm just telling you exactly how it was told to me. They can be at any time to discuss that would constitute that meeting. You said it could be more than once a month, but there Right, right. They can meet at any time to discuss. However, they should have an open meeting once a month that they invite the public to. So you can hear about what it is that they're proposed or what they're discussing. Um, I have seen their meetings usually in the afternoon, 12, 1 o'clock, when those two meet. I've seen them here, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We don't, the public doesn't have to be there for that, but they should, as I said, they should have an open meeting once a month so the public or anyone would like to attend. At their meetings, I don't know why he told you that. They don't pay, they don't pay bills. They don't determine what bills are, get, are getting paid. That's not what that's for. Maybe that was my assumption. Okay, no, they don't, they don't pay bills of being supposed to be paid by your trustees. You vote on your, on your, on your, on your money. Um, if you have questions, we used to be able to at the board meetings or at any time a trustee could come and ask the finance, the finance director, which you said, Mohan, ask him about it. But they took that out of the equation and they instituted the finance committee. So therefore, if you have questions, you should be able to ask the finance committee at a board meeting what, whatever question you have on accounts payable. That's why that particular committee was formed. Instead of having Mohan here, we have them here, and they should be able to answer the questions. Um, but they cannot take it upon themselves to pay the village bills with just two trustees. So it has to be a vote, and it's supposed to be a vote that is done in the public, at a public meeting, when you vote for your accounts payable. That's when you, you know, you have that, that that's what that's for. Um, I don't know, the mayor is involved in all committees. He's the mayor, he comes and goes in all committees. Now, that's news to me that you have the finance chairman and the village administrator on that committee. They can be, come and sit down and be part of it. But when you ask questions, or when the public asks questions about the finances of the village at a meeting, it's supposed to be directed to the finance committee chair or vice chair, either one. That's the way I was explained to me. So uh, they don't just pay bills, the board pays bills. Even the mayor doesn't vote on paying bills. That's why you have a board. Payroll it's itself. Not, excuse the word always. No, okay, well, payroll is supposed to be a budgeted item. This is the way it's supposed to go. This is the way it should go. Now, I'm not, not necessarily saying that's the way it goes. Payroll is a budgeted item. If you budgeted for that particular month, just throw a number out there $50,000 for payroll. Okay, that's budgeted. The budget was passed. All of a sudden, this month, payroll is 70000 You should have something there that says that I need to amend, add to, tell me where I'm getting the money from, because payroll is only 50000 That's why you can budget that. But they give you a chance to move a little bit because of overtime. And if that's what the case is, that should be noted in the record, that payroll went over due to overtime or whatever unforeseen circumstance that happened. That should be noted. And then I also voted on it. But the only thing I can tell you is what is supposed to happen. Now there's been accounts, I put it this way, the last accounts payable that I voted on was the second week of December. That was a month ago. That's the last one that me as a trustee voted on. Did they pay bills since then? Yes. Has bills been paid since the second week of, of, of um, December? Yes. Lights on, gas on. Somebody paid something. 
How much was it? Don't know. So, I mean, what's supposed to happen and what does happen, okay. But if you have the votes to make it happen, that's what happens. Yes, sir. That's the mayor's call. So he's intentionally keeping those directors out of the village meetings. So that I don't know if it's intentional, but it's his call. Okay. So he the reason why I'm saying that is because you, you have a village administrator. Let me ask you this question. Do you think that lacks transparency? What I think and what happens well, to you. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm trying to answer. I can't what I feel and what is happening is the reason why we have encyclopedias and everything else because I may feel one way and the people may feel another way. That's why we vote, that's why you do things because you know, one, no one person is an idol. But when you do put a person in that position, that's what that position holds. He's the mayor, he can if he chooses not to have his uh, department heads there, fine. But he does have an administrator. And by right, if your department heads aren't there, that's what your administrator is there for to answer those questions. They should be. I mean, if you're an administrator and you're, and you're in charge of the department heads, well, you, need to know, you should know what the department heads are doing that you can intelligently at least ask or get back to someone with that question. So that's his call. His call, his call alone. He, he, he appoints. The uh, department heads supposed to be with the consent of the board. He has the votes. Yes. So if he chooses not to have them there, that's his call. Why? I can't get anybody's head, but if you, if you know, like I said before, it's up. It's up to him if he wants to make that call. Yes, ma'am. Rosie, Rosie is the chairman. So she. She's the chairman of the finance committee. Okay. So when you, if you ask her about something, she should know. Between her and the, and the village administrator, it shouldn't be, I don't know. It should be, I can get back with you, but here's what I have. That's what it should be. But that's a perfect world. We're not, we don't live in a perfect world. I'm just letting you know what's happening and what, what, should, what should happen and what does happen are two different things. But yes, you would think that that would be the question. And not only that, there was a trustee that said that we should have the department heads here because they know they work with this every day. It hasn't happened. So, and I would think if I was there, I would think I would want somebody, if I can't answer your question and I'm in charge, I want somebody there that can ask your question. Because if I'm a part time mayor and I'm only here part time, then I can't answer all the questions. You know, when I come in or when I come around, I'm going to try to find out what's going on and take care of that. But day-to-day -day operations, that's what you have department heads for. And you have a person that's over the department heads to find out what's going on so they can be able to answer intelligent questions. Yes, ma'am. I have no questions. Um, and everyone here, because I do have another mic here. Can everyone hear? Yeah. Okay. Um, how much is in the water fund? <laughs> I have no mic. I, that waterfront changes, and it does, each and every month. Because each month, we have a section of the village that pays their water bill. The last I heard was a hundred and some thousand. What it is today, I don't know. Because money comes, I didn't ask the question um, since then. Like I said, we had, have not had a meeting in over a month, five weeks. So, no, I... I don't, I didn't ask that question. Was it given to me? Was it sent to me to tell me how much we have in there? No. So, let me say how much is in there now. I'll be guessing. Okay. And another question. What, is it motor fuel tax or TIF funds that pay for road repairs? Where'd you get TIF from? I'm just TIF is tax increment financing. 
No. TIF pays for it. TIF, TIF money stays within that district. They pay TIF instead of paying taxes to the whole village. They pay TIF instead of paying your schools, your libraries. That stays within that district to enhance that district. Motor fuel tax is supposed to pay for your roads. That's MFT, motor fuel tax is supposed to pay for your roads. And prepare, prepare, um, preparing them and redoing them, yes. Not water main, roads, yes. In the village, you have the responsibility of saying what roads need to be prepared within the building. That's a good question, and I'm going to answer it for you, but I never heard anybody say it like that, but that's a darn good question. You're asking what, who makes the determination of what roads we're going to pay? Right. Most times, that is done by which one out of the worst. However, with MFT, we can do that. We can prepare the roads that are the worst. But sometimes it takes both monies to pay to take care of a project. However, CDBG money is used in a certain area. You have to qualify for CDBG. You have to be, it has to be in a depressed area below a certain income. We only have three of those areas in the village. That's why a lot of times you hear CDBG money take care of this, take care of that. It's those three. The rest of CDBG won't pay. However, if you have a road that's really, really bad and it's not in there, that's what MFT is for. Okay, well, my second part of that question is this then. Why is it or again who has the responsibility of ID in the street or group of streets that have not been touched or repaired for 35 years? All they have done within the last three years. Engineers in your public works. Simple. Engineers, public works see the streets every day. They plow them, they drive through them, they whether they know they have a list, believe it or not, they have a list of the streets that are really, really bad. Engineers come back and tell you, okay, this is how much it's gonna cost, and this is what it's gonna entail because they know all the things that go along with trying to fix that street. So between your engineer and your public works. They should be able to determine what are the worst ones. And there's a list for that. There's a list for that. So the streets should be repaired. And the money for that, like I stated, MFT is for all streets. And CDBG has to be within that certain area or that range. Question asked? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I mean, I'm going to have to research that. I'm just something you just said that I was trying to think, but there are lights there and they're just out. I don't know. I, that's, what I, that's why I was going to look at it. If that's the case, then I'll find out when they're going to put the bulbs in because the parking lot was dark for a while, too. Two of those poles, those lights didn't work also. So I think they finally got the bulbs for that. So if there's bulbs or, you know, uh, the bulbs out, I'll find out why and then, no and get back to you let you know that they're working on it. If not, then I'll ask, can we do something about that? 
Because you're absolutely right. You're coming out the east the west, you come out to you come out of a building into a dark area. You don't know who's where. Somebody could be sitting around the corner, standing around, and you're right, it should be lit up. It should be. Yes, it is a high curve. I mean, it's, a, it's a ramp. And if you step early, yeah. I've seen people drive over it. <laughs> they back out. They don't back all the way out of their parking space. They back out a little bit, then they turn and they go across the... That, that has happened. But that's, that's what happens. Any other questions? Really? Well, let me... We got a half hour. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys exhale for a minute. But I don't want to wait to the last minute and say, okay, wait, I got this question. I have that question. So, um, is there anything? Is, they brought up good questions um, about the finances. It's, it should be a little bit more defined, but it is what it is. Um, quickly, I want to let you know the calendars. You were asking about the calendars. Um, when, and when we have board meetings. The board meetings are determined by the mayor. He designates what meetings and how often we should meet. You should at least meet once a month for your, um, I call it your business meeting. That's your second meeting and the fourth meeting. That's when you vote your money, legislation or whatever, you vote that out. Then you have a committee meeting prior to that so you can know what you're going to vote on and discuss it. So how often that happens is determined by the mayor. Now, if the, if the trustees want to call a special meeting for whatever, it just takes three trustees to ask for a meeting. So some of the residents may have a real, real concern and they get to the trustees and ask them, we need to have a meeting for this, then we, they, the trustees can petition for it, have it signed off, and have that meeting. It's just that so. Yes, sir. Along with what you were saying, it takes three trustees to call a meeting. How many does it take to have a meeting? A quorum. Just four? Yes. Three trustees and the mayor is a quorum. If you just have three trustees, then you cannot meet. You can have three trustees to call a meeting, but you need four for a quorum, and that's any meeting. That's board meeting, committee meeting, well, the committee meetings that we have the first and uh, third uh, Tuesday. You need three trustees and the mayor, or four trustees. Everyone understand that part? Okay. Um, any other questions? Before I embarrass this young man that just walked in, because I have some questions for him too, but I'm, I, you guys don't know who he is, but I'm going to let you know in a minute. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, when you sit down here, we're discussing what we're going to, we're asking questions. We may have vendors come here to present different things that they want to present to the village. We're asking them questions. It's really a discussion point. We don't take questions until the very end or the beginning, whichever it may be, but it's not for the audience to get involved and to go back and forth because we'll never end the committee meeting. And it's basically for, for us to discuss whoever's sitting right here or discuss what we're trying to bring at the next meeting or vote on at the next meeting. So it's not really meant for interaction with the, um, with the residents for your committee meetings, which happened on the first and third um, Tuesday. It's a discussion between us. We, we, don't, we ask questions, but we don't ask questions. I mean, we, I'm sorry. We entertain questions, but it's at the end or the beginning, whichever one that they deem necessary to happen on the agenda, pertaining to not just that, but if you notice, we had to make that happen to pertain to all questions. So at all meetings, you can ask a question on whatever you like to ask a question on. 
But we don't have to include doing that presentation. Someone comes in here and they present a insurance plan for the employees. Quite naturally, if we have the audience to participate, we we'll never get out of here. Because they're like, what about this? What about that? What about that? That's why when you vote your trustees in, you have, that's what you do. You vote someone in to represent you. And that's what they do at that meeting. On the second and fourth Tuesday, they actually vote it to be enacted. In other words, it could be if it's a legislature, legislature part, then it's voted to, to make it part of law for Salt Village. Or we vote money out. But we discuss that supposedly on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. And we only have three microphones. And as you can see, some of them don't work half, you know, with batteries or whatever. But everyone here is supposed to when we up there. A good question would be, you know, why don't we have it all the time up there? Because then we got this person sitting here, and you'll move this chair all the way up here. You won't hear anything. So we have it here. So they can, at least you can hear what's going on. And then that time that you want to ask a question about it will be they deem that necessary. That's why I believe that the questions for the first and third when you have a presenter should be at the end of that particular meeting. So say someone does come in and say, hey, I want to bring, I want to do a new floor scrub. I'm coming here, board, to show you my floor scrub is better than what you had. And you're going to save some money. And it's going to do this, it's going to do that, it's going to do this. We ask those questions for you, supposedly. And then, you know, because if we had everyone here ask those questions, we'll never get out of here. But at the end, if it's something that we didn't ask, or something that we forgot to ask, or something that wasn't asked, then you can ask that question. Hopefully, if that vendor is still here, they may be able to ask. But if not, we should be able to get back with you before we vote it out. If you have a question, say, well, so-and-so, you know, that, that it doesn't make sense, or I've dealt with that company before, and they were this, this, that we didn't know, okay. Okay, that, that's how that's done. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I've been like this for a while. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to name any names or anything, but uh, what I'd like to know is what type of relationship does the board have uh, with each other? Hopefully cordial. No, no, not hopefully. Uh, with the present board, what type of relationship? I mean, are you, uh, you know, with any group, you're going to have some people who are willing and agreeable to working with each other, and then sometimes you're going to have this one individual who's just antagonizing. But uh, like I said, not to name any name, but. What type of relationship does this board have as far as working with uh, or working for the village? Well, I put, I, I'm going to tell you this. I've been doing this for a little bit. Um, me, myself, if I see something that's wrong, I'm going to say something. They may, not, they may not like it. They may not want to hear it. But it's the truth. If I see you about to run to that door and you say, no, I'm not, I'm saying, well, wait, yes, you are. You don't want to listen to you run to the door and say, oh, it, was, it just closed just now. When you have a lot of, that's why it's hard to be a leader or whatever, because you got six different people that got six different ideas about six different things. So what, you, what your job is as an administrator, as a leader, as a mayor, is to talk to your board, to tell them as much as you be transparent with them. Because me as a person, if I see that you're lying to me, then I can't listen to what you're going to say. Or if you keep things from me, then I have to find out, then, then, then why, you know, we talk about transparency all the time. Be transparent with your board. Tell your board, I don't want to hear it anywhere else, but here's what's going on. Here's what's happening. Here's what we just did. Here's what I'm trying to do. But if you do those things and then your trustees say, well, wait a minute, we didn't hear nothing about that, but, I, but, but it was passed. Okay, but it wasn't passed with my vote. Now you have that animosity. Now you have that, 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 that door that's in the way. We're human beings. You know, if, if, if your wife told you that she's your wife and 
And quite naturally, everybody's going to have differences. But if she goes out there and spends this kind of money and says, because I, because I made it, I, I have a job and I make but we're together, it's going to bring up a little animosity there. I know you're working, but it's supposed to be we working together. Now, if it's a small amount, that's one thing. But she goes out there and comes back home with a brand new car, and you didn't know anything about it, where are we going to get the money from? I'm working every day, I pay for it. Oh, okay. So it's going to be like, that's where the animosity comes from. And that's how it happens. We're supposed to be professionals here. We're all elected officials. But when you start treating someone with less respect, then that's where, you, that's where it comes. Do we get along all the time? No, you never, that's never going to happen. I don't care what board or what, what municipality it is because everybody has their own way of doing things. But you should have professional courtesy. If it's something that you don't like, go in there and let's talk about it. One trustee at a time talks to the mayor. Can't have a bunch of them because now you got a meeting in the back. But you come in and you talk to them, hey, mayor, I, we don't, I, just, I, I know what you're trying to do, but here's what it is. Can we table this until we can all come together? That would be the first thing to do. Let's table this and until we can all come together on the same accord. Then once you do that, or at least try to get to that point, then that, that right there shows that you do respect what that person says. But if you go in and ask that question, they say, no, this is the way I want it, and know that I have the votes to do it, what I need to talk to you. If I know I got the votes to make that door close, and you see saying, well, let's leave it open, you know, instead of saying, okay, let's talk about it, tell me why you want to leave it open, Okay, but if you say, well, I understand what you're saying, but I got the votes to close it, we're going to close it. That's the problem. That, that, that's what happened. And this, Salt Village is not by itself like that. A lot of, I've gone to many, many different villages. I've seen villages where they had actually arrests because there were actually fights. There were people jumping up out of their seat going to, to whoever it is that they're going to and, and standing over them, you know. So we're not, we're not alone. This is not a one, one time thing. Because people are passionate about what they're doing. And they feel a certain way. Not that they want you to go and go their way, but it's just that's the way they feel. That's why as a administrator or as a leader, you sit down and you talk. And you say, hey, can I at least try to get you to what is it that it takes, what would it take for me to try to get you to at least try this? And if it doesn't work, we'll go back to another way, but that, that, that comes down long. Okay, I understand that, but what I'm saying is, the board that we have now, are they getting in these um, conflicts uh, due to their own personal um, agendas, or are they, are they doing this for their consistency? Whatever, whatever is being presented now, it's not necessarily for the board member, but for the, for the village itself. In the other words, you're saying are the arguments and stuff being done because of the constituents are asking them to do that? Some of those are. Some of the constituents come to the trustees and say, hey, how come you guys aren't doing this? How come you aren't doing that? So then the trustee says, okay, wait a minute, Mayor, can we, can we do this? And then some of them are just you know, I don't like what you're doing. So it's personal, it's both, it's a little bit of both. I mean, you, you, you're electing someone, I've always looked at it like this, I'm gonna ask the residents, because first time you tell me, well, Mr. Berger, why'd you do this? But you said it was okay. You said, I asked you about it, and you didn't say anything, you said it was fine. So don't get mad that you weren't there, or come up to the, come up to the village and express your opinion. We can't make you do that. You as a resident have more rights than we are as a um, elected official. You have more rights. Come up there. We can't police the village and say, well, we've been on this block and they need, I need the residents to come up and say, hey, my block is flooded. What are you guys gonna do about it? And if they didn't do about that week, then next week bring your neighbors with you, come back and say the same thing. Keep doing it. Tenacity, that's being tenacious. Huh? And that's, that's all I can tell you. I mean, it sounds like, well, you know, you should know, 
Now we as, as, as elected officials can bring it back to the mayor. Mayor, they, they came four times and asked for so and so. What are we going to do? And if he turns his head, then there's where you have the problem. Because he's not listening or they may not be listening or whatever. But you cannot have your own agenda. And you shouldn't have your own agenda. You should have the agenda of the people. They put you in there. Not put you in there so you can do what you want to do. Put you in there that you can do what you represent all the people. Not just folks that live next door to you. Any other questions? None? Um, we got 15 minutes left. And I want to, you know we guys were here a few, earlier at 7 o'clock, we had someone, a, pres a presenter come in and talk about Medicare. Ms. Clark talked about uh, going to Bloom um, Township and, 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 and um, finding, inf getting information out for that. So it was, I don't know if it was fate. But today we have uh, the young man just walked in. He's the Bloom Township representative, Keith Lott. He's right in the back back there. Raise your hand, Mr. Lott. <laughs> if you have questions afterwards, ask him about certain things. Bloom Township has a lot of resources that a lot of villages cannot afford. You pay your taxes to Bloom Township. Some of your taxes go there. They're under one roof, but they have a lot of different services, and they service more than just our community. They serve, they service all of Bloom Township, and they have a lot of resources. And if not, they can let you know where to, where to go. Medicare, Medicaid, um, everything. So you can also, before you go to Social Security, you can also he can tell you where to go in Bloom or where to go. Period. So it's a good thing to know who he is. Um, I'm glad he comes out, especially comes out to the town hall meeting. So he can be informal and personal with you guys after the meeting's over, pull his tail, ask him questions. Because he can direct you. He's a great asset to South Village, believe it or not. Yes, he is. And um, he's been here many, many times. And there is a section, there's a whole wing in Bloom Township for the seniors. So any questions that you may may not have, you can go right there as you go in the door, make a left, and it's right there. If you make a right, there's a window right there, and you can ask for Mr. Lott if he's there, usually he is, and ask him for you know other things. And then in the back, you have the uh, assessor for Bloom. So there's a lot of things there. So is there any, any other questions? Well, at this point, we get out early. And again, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming out. Um, we will do this. We will continue to do this. We didn't do it over the, over the uh, Christmas time because I respect the Christmas and people need to be with their families. But all I can tell you is this. You have the voice. You have the voice to change this village, change anything that you want. You have to, you have to do it yourself. And it takes the village to do that. Be, be asked questions. Be informed before you say or do anything. Ask and, and, and let someone know what it is that you, and also, if you can, is an election coming? Talk to your candidates. Find out what they believe in. See what they want. Talk to them on the side or whatever you see them. You know, but at least do your homework before you do, before you go any further. I've always told people that. And you have to. We have to get out and vote. Can't change anything sitting in the house talking about I should have, would have, could have. Get out and vote. Vote what you feel. Thank you guys very much and be safe going home.